In the name of God, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. What a blessing it is to be here in this beautiful space with these beautiful prayers and music and you, this beautiful congregation. Our Anglican tradition celebrates beauty. Beauty in nature, in people and places, and in art. That human expression of the holy imagination and creativity and longing for transcendence and connection that is the image of God in each of us. Today, we celebrate a particular artist, Andrei Rublev, generally acknowledged as Russia's greatest iconographer, one of the greatest iconographers, period. And you have a copy of one of his icons in your leaflet, thanks to Dondi DeBose, our printer. And if you haven't already, please take it out. You have probably seen this image before. Rublev created it in the early 1400s for a monastery near Moscow, and it has known a few homes since then. It has found its way into some of our homes or offices. And as you behold this image, what is the eye of your heart drawn to in it? Is there a color that calls to you? This royal blue of heaven that ties these three figures together? Or the green of life and growth? Or the red of flesh and blood and Georgia clay? Or maybe you're drawn to one of these angels at the table, or the light that encircles their heads, or the objects behind them. Or maybe you're drawn to an open space. Maybe you're drawn to something you can't put your finger on, a general impression of peace, calm, balance, connection, gaiety, welcome. What do you hear in your spirit? What does the eye of your heart see here? And how do you find yourself praying? Or what prayer grows in you as you look at this? That's what an icon is, after all. It's a prayer, an invitation to prayer. Or as we heard in one of our colleagues, icons are sometimes described as windows. An icon is a window into the divine, into mystery. And windows, after all, are openings. Windows are openings into beautiful worlds, broader vistas. They link two worlds. In many cases, they link the inside and the outside. Windows also link the heavenly and the earthly. And so it is with an icon. It's an opening. It's an opening. Actually, so much of what we do and hold sacred is an opening. Our scriptures, our prayers, our liturgies, even our doctrines are not closings, but openings to the mystery of God. That means that for those of us who like to interpret, analyze, pin things down into a sure and certain meaning or a final point, icons can frustrate, or rather, liberate. Because as seemingly simple as they are, this looks like a very simple image. The more time you spend with them, the more you see and hear and wonder the more stories you recognize in them, including your own. Take, for example, these three angels at the table. Who are they? 
the divine strangers who visit Abraham and Sarah in their old age, or the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit of the Holy Trinity, or another Holy Trinity, another communion of saints known only to you and to God. And what about that tree behind the middle figure, that figure wearing the flesh and blood red of God the Son? Is it the tree of good and evil in the Garden of Eden? Is it the oaks of Mamre where Abraham and Sarah welcomed angels? Is it the tree of life or the tree of the cross? Yes, yes, it's all of these. And then take a look at that structure behind the figure on the left. Is that Abraham and Sarah's house? Or is it Jerusalem? Or the heavenly city? Or the house of God the Father in which there are many rooms? Or is it another place you have known? Yes, yes, and yes. And then there's that strange-looking mountain that rises up behind the third figure, almost like a wave. It rises up behind that figure robed in life, giving green of the Holy Spirit, drawing a circle around these figures. Is it Mount Moriah, where Abraham nearly sacrificed his son Isaac? Mount Sinai, where God spoke the law and covenant to Moses? Or perhaps it's the mount where Jesus was transfigured before his disciples, or the hill of Golgotha, or any of the other mountains where God's people have encountered God. What is it for you? What mountaintop no moments or mountains to climb does it evoke for you? That's the question with an icon and with this icon, what you see, what you hear, what you wonder, what you pray when you read or behold or sink into this icon, looking into it and through it to God. It's not a free-for-all, of course. The symbols used here do have meanings. They have multiple meanings. Every paint stroke, says one scholar, every paint stroke of an icon has a meaning hallowed by centuries of prayer. Icons speak a common ancient language, and some knowledge of that language helps. Not in order to decode the icon or to narrow it down into one definitive meaning, but rather to enter more fully into it and into the multiple stories and mysteries to which it points and to which you belong, in which you find your place. Indeed, everything about this particular icon seems to say, come, come, welcome doesn't it? That was part of Rublev's particular genus, an iconograph iconographic innovation, focusing on a single moment and central characters, telling the story through their positions. Look at how they look at one another so tenderly. Look at how their bodies are open up to one another and to us, the viewer. Notice the way their hands and their feet draw you to this table with them and make clear there is a place here for you. There is an open place at this table. It's as if they're saying, here you are. Here you are welcome. You belong. What I love about it is that it's not a demanding welcome, though. It's gentle, unassuming, spacious. Everything about it, the soft colors and soft faces, 
the gentle gestures and the diverted gazes. This open place at the table, everything seems designed to say, come, welcome. You are safe here. You can come as close as you want. What an invitation. What hospitality, what welcome, what love. What a gracious God we see and encounter here, inviting us into this holy communion, into the most intimate relationship and prayer, into the peace that passes all understanding. Won't you come? And God is pouring invitations like this all around us. There are windows into the divine, into holy mystery all around us because God loves us and wants us to come and take our place at the table and in this holy communion. Amen.